Hey, thank you for stopping by. My name is Larry Whitler. I'm an artist and an illustrator. That's not all I am. I'm also a father and a son and a friend and a partner and a neighbor. Oh, you get the idea. It's, I'm, all, I'm everything. We all are. We're everything, right? But for this video, let's talk about the artist and illustrator part of who I am and what I do and, and why you're here at the Silver Springs Welcome Center. First, let me say this, that art is an interesting word because it manifests itself in, um, in many ways. It, it manifests itself in music, in architecture, in cooking, in dance. Even teaching is an art, one that I'm not good at, by the way. Um, my particular art has manifested itself in the form of drawing and painting, but also in writing and in songwriting and um, that's probably it. So this video, I'm making this video for Silver Springs, for the uh, Friends of Silver Springs. They have a welcome center there. And I want to thank Marianne Marco in Silver Springs for this opportunity to share my art. She invited me to um, come by and, and um, drop off some paintings. So that's what I did. That's what's in this room if you're watching this video in the welcome center. Um, I have 10 paintings on display in here, and um, I'm humbled, <laughs> honored, and a little bit embarrassed that my paintings are being looked at now. So it's kind of cool, though. So thank you again, Marianne, and thank you for watching and for being interested. Um, you know, one of the things I know is that you're interested because I, I do social media, even though I'm 68 years old and us old guys aren't supposed to be interested in that, right? But I do. I do social media, and I get a lot of questions. People ask us a lot of questions. And a lot of people want to know about me, which is weird. Not about the art, but about me. So I want to tell you a little bit, since that seems to be a common question. People also ask about some things that I've been involved in, like radio. Um, I, I have been involved in radio. You might notice this pretty cool microphone right here. <laughs> um, but um, so let me start there. Let me start with there. I have, my my partner, my best friend is is Robin McBlain, and um, she's also an artist. So since art is in my core, um, or as they say in science circles, my DNA. Uh, it means that throughout my whole life, when I'm around most people. Their mo their DNA, <laughs> their core is sports or or food, although food's pretty good for me too. Um, <laughs> there's food and um, sports, and cars and politics and how to grill the perfect steak and how not to use tartar sauce on your fish. I I, I love tartar sauce. Anyway, I've always been interested in how a painting was made. I've always been interested in how a song was written or produced or how a movie was made or how a sculptor can take a piece of granite and make it look like David in the big statue of David, right? And by the way, did you know that the two most commonly spoken words that come out of the mouths of people who see David for the first time, did you know the most commonly spoken words are Oh, my. It's true. it's true. Robert and I learned this from an interview we did on the radio. Anyway, so let me tell you about Robin. When I first met Robin, it was clear that she was another artist. She wasn't talking to me about politics or about cars or about grilling steaks. Uh, she was talking about art, and um, I knew she was an artist. She dressed like an artist. She talked like an artist. She embraced life like an artist. So prior to knowing Robin, I was a... Uh, college performer. I performed um, in colleges. I was the young man with the long hair, driving a 1970 Nova up and down the East Coast of the United States, playing a guitar, singing songs for college students. And, you know, that got old after a while. It was, it was about a three-year thing for me. And you want to know something? It wasn't that I didn't love the music anymore. It's that I didn't love being uncreative because every night I was playing the same songs, mostly cover songs, Billy Joel, Elton John, Beatles, Stevie Wonder, and that got old. Besides, at this point in my life, um, it was like the late 80s, my son Alex had been born and I had a little, a little boy. I wanted to be home. You know, I wanted to stay home with him. 
So leaving the world of music, performing music, was kind of scary because I didn't know what to do. So I thought, well, let me do children's music. That way I can do music for Alex and I can, and I can still do music. Well, when I brought this up to Robin, guess what? She wanted to do it too. So we created, before I knew it, we had this duo and we called ourselves Robin and the Giant. It's because I'm big. That's what I am. I'm big. Anyway, um, so we were doing children's shows. We were recording CDs. We, we even produced a children's radio program that went national, which was kind of cool. It was simply called Robin and the Giant. Well, then, you know, we had a local radio show in Ocala on uh, WTMC. And for some reason, it wasn't a children's show, but for some reason, we still called ourselves Robin and the Giant. And... Um, I guess because of that and because we were on the air every morning, we became local celebrities. Nothing big, but, you know, celebrity status in a small town. Everyone knew us and everyone wanted a piece of the pie. Who knew I would ever have a pie that somebody would want a piece of? You know, we have a song in uh, our children's catalog, and one of the lines in the song is, be careful when you have a good thing going that someone doesn't take it away. Well, that is what happens when you have a good thing going. People want to take it away or somehow be part of it. And so that's what happened. We had a, a radio manager who called me into the office and told me that Robin was going to be fired. What? I mean, we had this really popular radio show, and they're going to fire Robin? And so why? And then I was told, don't worry, you will have a partner that you will get along with on Monday. This was a Friday. So in, in three days, we had a replacement for Robin. And I quit. <laughs> I won't drag on the story. I just quit. I walked out of there, and I was flabbergasted. And I never used the word flabbergasted. Anyway, I went home, laid, at the, laid on my bed, looked around at the walls, and I thought, what the heck am I going to do now? And on the walls were pieces of art that I had made. And I thought, well, maybe I can do that. And um, so that's really why we're here, right? To talk about the art. So let's, let's talk about the art. So the artwork here on display in the Welcome Center is beautiful, I hope. I hope you like it. But it's pretty tame. I mean, it's, it's um, landscapes, you know? It doesn't get any tamer than that. So, um, but I'll tell you what, I love painting landscapes. Just like when I do music, I love doing love songs. I mean, I know they're simple, but I just love doing them. Maybe I'm old. I am old, but maybe that's why. You know, when I was young, though, I, I did like to paint and draw some weird things. I'll put a few of those up here. Um, you know, things that I thought were clever, things that I thought were different, things that I thought sent some kind of a message. You know, that's the way artists are when they're young. They want to make a statement. They want to stand out. They want to be profound, you know, like Lenny Bruce was to comedy, like Andy Warhol was to art and screen printing, like Bob Dylan was to songwriting, or believe it or not, I even know this name, Coco Chanel, like Coco Chanel was to fashion, like Jane Austen was to literature. You know, we all want to kind of stand out, be different, be unique, be weird. We all want to be a little bit weird, right? Well, not anymore. I like doing landscapes. So here's some more background for me. In the 1960s, I was high, young, well, not even high school, like junior high school. And I was growing up in a suburb of New York City on Long Island. The town is called North Merrick. And my talents were being groomed by the school. They, they knew I wasn't going to play football, even though I looked like I should. But, you know, that wasn't going to happen. They, they noticed I had art talents, and so they were grooming me to be an artist on Madison Avenue. That's where all the uh, advertising agencies were. Anyone with a talent for art, by the way, was guided by uh, guidance counselors to study commercial art. Commercial art is exactly what it sounds like. It's you're doing art for commercial purposes to sell something. And that was the future. We would be creating illustrations for magazine ads. And in fact, we were told that photography had pretty much taken over and that we'd most likely be drawing floating underwear. I love telling this story, but I said it, floating underwear. You heard it right. The explanation was that photos 
of people wearing underwear was too risque, and that even illustrations of people wearing underwear was pushing the envelope. So the solution to Madison Avenue's dilemma was to have artists draw underwear floating as if being worn by the invisible man and the invisible woman. But, and this was a big but, we were told when you draw floating underwear, do not draw revealing bulges in the underwear. Now, you're a 15-year-old boy and you hear somebody talk about revealing bulges in an underwear, you giggle. You know you giggle. Not that the teacher cares, but I remember giggling. Anyway, it just seemed boring to me. It just seemed boring. I'm going to be drawing floating underwear for the rest of my life. I'm 15. I'm looking at my future, and that's what I'm going to be doing. So, of course, my love for music was the direction I went. I said, well, I'm just going to do music. I thought, hey, if the Beatles could do it, I should be able to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, back to the art. Let's get back to the art. Um, even though I was playing music, writing songs, and courting every record company in New York City, London, and L.A., I was always drawing or painting something. In fact, I would send demo tapes to everybody. One of those people I sent demo tapes to was Ed Freeman. Ed Freeman was a producer. He's the guy who produced Don McLean's American Pie. And I even got to visit Ed in his, um, in his apartment in New York City one time and played guitar for him. But anyway, he would send me... I, I would send him letters with my demo tapes, and I would always decorate the letters with illustrations. And he wrote back more than once saying, you're, you're not ready musically, but I love your artwork. See, even then, I was getting a hint. By the way, I think Ed went on to become a really accomplished photographer. Uh, anyway, uh, everyone knew I could paint. Everyone knew I could draw. I was constantly being asked to create some kind of artwork or portrait, and I did. I did them all. Pencil, colored pencil, charcoal, watercolor, gouache. That was later in life, actually. Pastels, acrylics, oil, most recently digital art. So let's talk about that digital art, because that's the newest one for me. It's mysterious for us old people, and it's often misunderstood. It's very misunderstood. Digital art is not the same as artificial intelligence, by the way. Digital art is as unique to each artist as any blank canvas is. Think about that. It's as unique to each artist. So if you have Photoshop or Procreate or any of the digital platforms and you're an artist your art is going to look different than the guy sitting next to you and the girl sitting next to him. You're going to, you're going to all have your own little style. So that's it. We all have our own approach, our own method, and some digital artists utilize the digital tricks that are incorporated with the program and others don't, like myself. I really don't. I use uh, digital art. I want it to have a painterly look. I want my the art I do. I, I use Procreate, by the way. That's the one I use. My, I, I have used Photoshop a little bit, but mostly I use Procreate. And um, I want it to have a painterly look. I want it to look like a painting. Again, maybe because I'm old and I'm very conservative when it comes to paintings. Um, anyway, I want it to look like traditional mediums. So that's why when I paint digitally, I paint exactly the same way as I do when I paint traditionally. Here's the quick overview. Let's say I'm doing an acrylic painting. I paint uh, very rough underpainting, first of all, in complementary colors. And after the underpainting dries, I paint the landscape very loosely in what you might call an impressionistic way. And then I paint the details. Now, it's the, it's the extent of the details that differs from me. Sometimes I stop right away. Sometimes they keep going and going and going, and then it becomes more photorealistic, which some people like. I kind of like it to stay impressionistic. I kind of like it to stay loose. So that's usually where I fall on that. Um, and again, I paint digitally exactly the same way that I paint um, traditionally, except, of course, you don't have to worry about cleaning brushes and, you know, you know, having 
either tur- turpentine or water or some kind of solvent or, uh, you know, thinner. So um, let's see. I use Procreate on an iPad, in case you don't know about Procreate. Um, there was a very considerable learning curve for me as uh, I was learning it, and I'm still learning. I'm still evolving, and maybe a year from now my style will be greatly different than it is right now. Uh, we'll see. Who knows? I know it's changed a lot in the last year, so who knows next year what it'll look like. Anyway, the big difference with digital paintings is that, again, you don't have to clean brushes, and it's a little quicker. I'll be honest with you. It's But it's quicker, but it's still sometimes... I've had paintings that I've done digitally that I could get done in two hours, and I've had paintings that I do digitally that took 12 hours. Some acrylic paintings I've done in four hours, let's say, and uh, again, 12 hours is probably not unusual for acrylic painting either. Oils is different because you have to wait a long time for them to dry. So hopefully as I'm talking in these time-lapse videos or playing your able to get an idea of what I'm talking about. The 10 pieces of art that Marianne Marco has graciously allowed us to set up in the Silver Springs Welcome Center consists of seven works that I painted digitally. Seven are digital. The other three are um, acrylic paint on canvas. I do have prints for sale. The best way to browse through my work is to go to my website, larrywhitler.com. Is that it right there? <laughs> um, and then click on the links on that site because that takes you to some third-party vendors. I use um, Pixels, I use um, ArtPal, and I use Redbubble. Um, you could use any of them. You could look at them. Sometimes they have sales, and I don't control the sales. The sales are, are done by them. Um and the, the reason I picked these three is because the quality of the art is really good. What they print um, is really good. So, And you can buy the originals, too. You'll have to contact us for them. Um, but if you just want a print of, of the art, you can go to those places. Anyway, thank you for watching. And um, by the way, even though Robert and I have retired from radio, we still have a program that we do on YouTube. It's called The World Spins Fine on Her Own. You might want to check that out. That's fun. It's not usually about art. It's usually about just you know going places and, and looking at things. The, the, t- the title, The World Spins Fine on Her Own, by the way, comes from the fact that when we left radio, we figured they don't need us, meaning the listeners. They don't really need us. They can do any. They don't need our opinion. There are people out there doing way better than we ever did with giving opinions. People like, oh, I don't even want to name anybody because <laughs> it'll push buttons. Anyway, yeah, they didn't need us. So we called it The World Spins Fine on Her Own. Okay, anything else? Uh, I think I'm done. All right, hey, thank you for watching and listening and enjoy the, the art show here. There's 10 pieces, but more importantly, get out of this room. Go do something. Silver Springs is out there. You got a beautiful park waiting for you to discover. Go rent a canoe, rent a kayak, get rent one of those paddle boards. Go out on the glass bottom boats or one of those other the big boats that go for 90 minutes or whatever they do out there. It's just beautiful. Take a walk, you know, and and, and then visit the other state parks as well. And the other national parks. The the the, the Ocala National Forest has some beautiful places that you can visit. All right here right near where you're standing right now if you're watching this in Silver Springs. All right, I won't keep you any longer. I know you're getting antsy. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, everybody at the Friends of Silver Springs. Thank you, Robin. Robin helps me with everything. And um, take care. <laughs>